Hello and welcome to the end of the week. It's finally with us, a Friday, and we've got, as always, a bit of comedy for a Friday. Oh, love a bit of comedy. George and I have been out and about in the local area. If you want to check out some of our videos on social media, we've got Instagram, YouTube, and Facebook. So they're all called Brett's Old Time Radio Show, and we love it if you'd give us a little like and follow, and obviously watch our little video clips. Usually, it turns out that George is sort of taking the mickey out of me. Sometimes I realise it, sometimes not so much, but they're worth a little look. Thank you for joining me once again for our regular late night visit to those dusty studio archives of old time radio shows right here at my home on the south coast of the United Kingdom. I've launched a supporter page at patreon.com forward slash Brett's old time radio show. However, I know what you're here for. You're here for an episode of Steptoe and Son. And as I mentioned a few times, we are getting low on Steptoe and Son episodes. We've only got a few left. This one was first broadcast on the 14th of March, 1976, and it's called Porn Yesterday. We now present another episode in the radio series based on the world-famous BBC comedy success, Steptoe and Son. (laughs) With Wilfred Bramble as Albert and Harry H. Corbett as Harold. This week, Born Yesterday. Dad? Dad? I'm home. Where are you? Where are the others? Oh, there he is. Spark out in the deck chair with his feet up on the dung heap. (laughs) Surrounded by the murmur of innumerable blue bottles, obscuring his bonds from view. Oh, look at him. Oh, what a picture of sartorial elegance. His trousers rolled up, socks rolled down, a knotted handkerchief on the head, and a burnt-out roll-up stuck to the lower lip. (laughs) Oh, that frail old torso, totally exposed to the hot noonday sun, save for the ex-army braces dangling over his threepenny bits. (laughs) Oh, would that was a Picasso to capture this moment for posterity. Oh, God, he looks like something out of Doctor Who. I wonder how long he's been out here. Oh, that, that. oh there's Harold. Oh, I've just this minute sat down. Oh, I've been working hard all day. So have I, Dad. Not as hard as me. I haven't been off my feet all day. I've been cleaning the house, cleaning the stable, clearing up the yard. Oh, I'm so sorry, Dad. You really must take things more easy. I'm an old man. Yeah, where's that old spot? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a quick jet up the car, but that'll make him jump about a big <laughs> you, you stupid overgrown kid. Turn it off! I'm soaking wet! That serves you right, you lazy little... Lazy? Me? I've only just this minute sat down. I've been working hard all day. So have I, Dad. Not as hard as me. Number one. Uh, I haven't been off my feet all day. I've been cleaning the house. Three. Cleaning the stable. Four. Cleaning the yard. Oh, yes, yes. I'm sorry, Dad. You really must take things more easy. Here, yeah, there's one missing. I'm an old man. That's the one. <laughs> Fancy doing a stupid thing like that. I could have had an heart attack, a sudden shock like that. I go on dry yourself. A little drop of water ain't going to hurt you. Oh, yes. This is all very sad to France, this is, isn't it, eh? The sunshine, the deck chair. Well, I'm nearly fighting with heat on a cot. Very sound to pace. Where's Brigitte, then? Did she hear me coming? Probably inside to put a bra on, did she? <laughs> I wasn't expecting you home this early. Obviously. So this is how the jet set live, is it? Dining al fresco on the patio. Oh, beautiful. The outer remnants of a sirloin steak. Mmm. A green salad. Tossed, I may add. Ice cream, a pan of teller, and a quart of brown ale. Very nice. Do you know what I've had? A corned beef sandwich and a drink out of the horse's bucket. <laughs> I've got yours inside. Same as this, is it? Well, no, not exactly. What have I got? What has the worker come home to? What has the galloping gourmet created for me today? Shepherd's pie and bread and butter pudding. Both dishes made, of course, from the corned beef sandwiches what I brought home yesterday. Well, they're always on at me to save money, and food's very expensive these days. Do you know how much a steak is? Uh, let me think. 
One and six a pound. At least it was the last time you gave it to me. <laughs> That's a lie. You had a piece of rump steak at last Thursday. Yeah, well, I don't know whose rump it come off. <laughs> the rhinoceros, I should think. Why'd you come home so early for, anyway? I came home early because I'm knackered. It is hot today. It is 82 degrees in the shade, and I didn't have any. I do not have a parasol, a bucket of ice drinks, and a cart to keep me going. I also do not have an electric fan. The only breath of wind available to me come from the horse's tail. <laughs> and he tried to prevent the gnats from congregating round his bottle and glass. <laughs> Come on, help me unload the cart. You haven't brought much home with you. Oh, I fully appreciate that three and a half yards of lead piping and one broken water eater <laughs> will not keep you in the manner to which you is accustomed. But this, this could be quite valuable. Here. That's a what the butler saw machine. Ah, oh, you recognised it. Well, it takes you back to your lecture with youth, does it? Eh? Hanging round the Penny Arcade at Hammersmith Broadway, bright the bunking in the picture palace. Yeah, you have to be sixteen to look at these. Me and Charlie Harris used to lift each other up, oh. eight me each. I used to let him watch the first half, and then I used to watch the second half till he tumbled that the second half was always better than the first half. <laughs> better than the pictures they were. You could stop the handle. I'll stop your handle in a minute. Go <laughs> and help us down with it. <clears throat> Have you seen it? What's it like? Huh? Is it the maid having a bath, or oh. is it the mistress caught in the rain and taking her clothes off in the woods? I don't know. I haven't seen it yet. Here. Yeah. It's French. Fifi a la photography. Oh, I remember that one. Red hot, that one is. She's posing in the raw, and a photographer emerges from under his black cloth with nothing on except his socks and suspenders. <laughs> his socks and suspenders? Yeah. I don't know why they kept them on. They always did, though. I expect it was the cold floors. <laughs> oh, come on, let's hurry up. Let's get it inside. Yeah, all right, all right. Don't get worked up. I'll have to turn the hose on you again. Yeah. Yeah, it fits in that corner perfect. Let's have a look. The handle won't turn. You've got to put a penny in. I've got a penny. I've got a penny. Oh, pennies. Oh, God. Decimalisation. I said no good would come of it. 30 seconds of red hot porn and they go and change the currency. Well, don't get out of your prem. <laughs> <laughs> now, patience, patience. I believe I have some old pennies in my little pillar box. Uh-huh. Yeah, there. 1904. Edward the Seventh. He probably knew the bird in the film. <laughs> well, go on, Teddy boy, have another look at her. Let's have a look. Ah, 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 ah. It's my machine. You can have your pen in a minute. What's happening? Oh, no, no, she's not mad. Oh. Yeah, she must be knocking on 78 now. <laughs> <laughs> Oh dear, oh dear. How did you get turned on by this? <laughs> what a load of old rubbish. <laughs> yeah. Hey, it stopped. It's gone out. Hey, that's all right. Go on, get going, you car song. Go on. Hey, it says, in three episodes, three pence. Twisters in them days, too. Oh, that's better. Oh, oh she's showing her ankle. Oh, stop it. Stop it. My senses is inflamed. Oh. Blimey. That must be the biggest pair of stays I've ever seen. <laughs> hey, you could make a trampoline out of them. <laughs> go on, let's see. Get them off, girl. Go show, on. show us. Get out of it. Go on, get out of it. Oh, dear, oh, dear. Here, look at the size of those legs. <laughs> she could play for the British Lions. <laughs> hello, hello. Here comes a photographer from under his gloves. You're right. He's got his socks on. <laughs> you dirty old man. <laughs> I can see your bum. <laughs> hey, wait a minute. That's not his bum. He's got his tights on. God, what a take on. Oh, God, it's gone out again. It always does when it gets to the interesting bit. Put another penny in. <laughs> hey, wait a minute. That's not right. 
What? What? Well, it's a different story. It's a girl in a bathroom. It's not even the same bird. The 1920s, this is. When? She's nice, though. There you are. She's stripped off. <laughs> She's on the scales now. <laughs> hello, hello. The door's opening. Here he comes. It's the milkman. <laughs> The milkman! <laughs> How ridiculous can you get? A crate of milk and no trousers on! <laughs> Has he got his apron on? Yes, yes, yes! He's taking it off now! Oh, God, oh dear, oh dear, oh dear! Is he pouring oh. the milk in the bar? Yeah, that's right! It's all over, huh? Yeah, all over, right over! <laughs> uh, is he getting into the bath with her? Yeah, yeah, that's it! How did you know? Turn it off, Harold. You don't want to watch any more. That's shut up. I've enjoyed it. No, no, you don't watch that rubbish. It's not good for you. It's disgusting. Shut up. I'm enjoying it's it. Exploiting innocent people for gain. That's what they were doing. Oh, yes, yes. yes. Young men out of work, nothing to eat. It, not knowing where their <laughs> next penny was coming from. Leaning up against the wall all day. Oh, look at that. A bloke steps out of a big car and says, <laughs> You're a well set up young man. How oh, would yeah. you like to earn a fiver? How would you like to be in <laughs> films? <laughs> what are you going on about me? Quiet. <laughs> oh, here we go. <laughs> here we're coming up to the last furlong now. <laughs> here, what is he doing with that loofah? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's doing his pieces now. <laughs> oh, you want to see this dead? Oh, God. No, he looks a bit like you. <laughs> In fact, he looks just like you. <laughs> <laughs> Dirty old me. <laughs> it is you. Now, I, I can explain. But it's you. you That's don't... you in there. You don't understand it. It's like I said. We were all out of work. How could you lower yourself? He was laughing just now. I didn't realise it was my father, did I? We didn't have any food in the house. We didn't have any milk. You put enough of it in the bath, didn't you? <laughs> I didn't pay for it. I brought the leftovers home, though. I managed to get a quart back for you. <laughs> How could you do such a thing? My own father. A male Linda Lovelace. <laughs> oh, I didn't know it was going to be like that. I thought he was going to make a proper film. I thought I was going to be on at the Gaumont. Another Rudolph Valentino, that's what he said. I should have realised it when I got there. An old photographer's shed in the Gold Hawk Road. <laughs> That's where I bought it from. They're pulling it down. I just can't believe it. My own father. Oh, God. What must my mother have gone through? She didn't know about it, though, did she? Of course she did. That was her sister in the bath. <laughs> it was... Not Auntie Rose. Yeah. She died of pneumonia a week later. Oh, dear. Oh, you mustn't blame her. It wasn't her fault. It wasn't my fault either. You don't know what it was like in those days. They were hard times. Everything we had was in porn. And so was you. <laughs> it wasn't really porn. I mean, nothing happened. It was just pretend. It looks like it happened. I suspect. The first two penny whiff was innocent. That was just a cover-up for the disgusting pen of you, was it? Yeah, it wasn't as bad as that. It was that bad. Supposing people was to recognise you. What? After all this time, it was 50 years ago. I recognise you. You haven't changed all that much. You were just as horrible then as you are now. <laughs> you don't seem to understand the position what this could place me in. Ah, now we're getting to it. It's you you're worried about. I'm entitled to be. If this got out, I would be the laughing stock. This could undermine my whole social standing in the community, this could. <laughs> what social standing? You know very well that I've been trying to get into the Acton Golf Club for years now. Five years. It's bad enough being a rag and bone man. They're very choosy. No Seamites. No Commonwealths. And certainly no sons of silent porn stars. <laughs> I mean, we don't even today allow actors in. Even ones that keeps their clothes on. Oh, no, I shall be Blackpool straight away. Once again, you've ruined my chances to better myself. You make me laugh, you do. You don't mind going to see other people with their clothes off? All them French films, that's all right. You can't get enough of that. Well, they're sons and daughters of somebody. Mothers, fathers, 
Oh, that don't matter, as long as it's not one of your own. Anyway, don't matter these days. All the film stars do it. Marlon Brando, Oliver Reed, they all show their bums. <laughs> <laughs> I don't do it for a fiver, do they? <laughs> and anyway, how can you locken yourself to Marlon Brando and Oliver Reed? Look at you. Pulse <laughs> it. Then and now. There is a world of difference between an artistic flash in a highly charged dramatic film and your performance. I mean, it wasn't even a story. A milkman with a crate of milk and no trousers on. They only lasted a minute. You didn't have time for trousers and boots. They already had to be off. People didn't pay a penny to see a bloke do a striptease. Oh, I know. A penny. Oh, it's all so tatty. Well, I don't know what you're worried about. Nobody's going to see it. Nobody ever did see it. They censored it. They said it was too racy. There was a police raid. They destroyed all the copies. Are you sure? Me and your Auntie Rose was down in the Hammersmith Nick all night long. They came in just when we'd finished a night in a Turkish harem. I remember I was frog-marched up the Gold Hawk Road in a policeman's cape and a pair of curly-toed slippers. A night in a... There aren't any more of these things. No, I told you they'd all been destroyed. I don't know how this one escaped. It hasn't escaped, don't you worry. I'm going to destroy it myself. You haven't seen the rest of it yet. I have no desire to see the rest of it. I've seen quite enough, thank you. Well, let's have a look before you do away with it. I'd like to see it just once more before you burn it. Yes. Go on, look. I think you ought to. Let's see how disgusting mm. it was. Mm. Go on, you have a look. Have a good look. <laughs> <laughs> What's the matter? Are you ashamed of yourself? No. Just funny seeing what you used to look like after all them years. Yes. Yes, well, we all have to get old, don't we? It'll come to me one day. Right, let's get rid of this film. I shall destroy the entire drum. All 500 filthy photos. Oh, God! Are they going to recognise me? They've even got a cast list. Milk a Lady, starring Albert Stepto and Rose Bun Clark. <laughs> oh, auntie. <laughs> Harold. What? Can I keep one of the pictures? No. It, it, it just for a memory. Look at it now and again. No. It's N too inflammable. Nobody will see it. I'll keep it in my suitcase. No. I'm sorry, Father. It's best that you forget all about this sorry episode in your life. And I will try to do the same. I shall destroy them all. Whatever you say, Harold. Oh, for God's sake, go and put some clothes on. You look like something more than wheelers dug up. Yeah. All right. I won't be long. Oh, dear. I mean, how could he have done such a thing? And with Auntie Rose. It could only have been about 23 when these was taken. I mean, look at his shoulders. Covered in pimples. <laughs> Poor old devil. I suppose it wasn't his fault, really. He was a victim. Just another prisoner of the capitalist tyranny. He didn't stand a chance. Anybody at home? Hey, Vicar. Oh, my God. Well, well. <coughs> oh. <laughs> I, yes, I, um, I do hope we're not intruding. The door was open. I did knock, but you appeared not to hear. Now, that's quite all right. Come in, in please. Uh, you've met my wife. Good afternoon. Charmed. Uh, something interesting you were looking at? Uh, no, 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 no. Just something what I picked up off of the round. Uh, I'll put them back. Oh, anyway. Good afternoon, Vicar. Mrs. Vicar. Oh, I'm sorry. I mean, Mrs. Cakebread. Uh, this is a pleasant surprise. Uh, sit down over there. Uh, be careful of the horseshoes on. Oh, never mind, that's good luck in this. <laughs> yes. Harold, I've been thinking. If you painted a beard on all of them. Dead. Uh, uh, on me, that is, not Rose. No, no, only me. And I could. Dead, you're naked. So what? You've seen it before. But they haven't. We've got company, Father. Where? Oh, my God! <laughs> you can't catch me again. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Look, please, go and put some clothes on, Father. It seems we've come at an inopportune time. Oh, no, 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 not at all. 
Uh, father was just about to take his daily bath, wasn't you, Father? Uh, Go and put some clothes on, Father. Oh, no, 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 please, not on my account. Oh, I'd rather he did. <laughs> Go and put some clothes on, Father. Yeah, right. Uh, I'm sorry about the... I'm sorry if you saw me... I won't be a minute. <laughs> I, I do apologise, Mrs. Capred. I wouldn't have subjected you to a sight like that for all the... <laughs> oh, oh, don't worry, young man. Charles and I spent our early missionary days in the Congo. Some of those traps were built like... <coughs> <laughs> or was it the pygmies? Do you know, I can never remember. Anyway, straight from a Dorset vicarage to there, a girl soon learns to take it in her stride. Ha, 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 yes. <laughs> yes. Oh, do forgive me, I am forgetting my manners. May I offer you some refreshment? A glass of sherry, perhaps? It's very good. It's the one Orson Welles drinks. <laughs> no, thank you. We won't stop long. Uh, we've come about the church fete and jumble sale. You know, white elephant stall and all that. Oh, yes. We wondered whether you had any odd bits and pieces we could put on the stall. Uh, every little thing helps. Oh, yes, yes, of course. I'm sure we've got something for you. I'm sure we could drum up a few ornaments, knick-knacks, objects, darts and the like. <laughs> Splendid. I'll send the scouts round to collect them. I'll leave them in the yard. I say, isn't that a what the butler saw machine? Yes, yes, yes. I haven't seen one of those in a coloured gentleman's age. <laughs> May I um, have a turn? No, no, no. See, uh, it only takes out pennies. I, I might have one. We still get them in the plate, you know. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> God, he, he, it's broken. Oh, what a shame. Uh, perhaps we can get it mended. It's just what we're looking for to liven up the fate. We haven't been doing so well in recent years, what with the telly and horse racing. It would be a good fundraiser, that. Surely not. Not at a church fight. Well, they're quite harmless, aren't they? Quite innocuous. We see much worse on the telly, don't we? Uh, <laughs> not like this one, you don't. <laughs> Really? May I, um, have a try? No, no, please, please, you can't. It's empty. Oh, I thought I saw you put the drum back in. Oh, no, no, no. They was blanks. Uh, it's a sort of test card. Oh, <laughs> pity. Still, it's a nice machine, though. Worth a few pounds, I would say. You wouldn't consider donating it to us for sale. They are very collectible. Oh, no. I was going to sell it myself. We could split it 50-50. Huh? 60-40. We do so desperately need new bells. Desperately? Oh, uh, yes. All right, then. Empty. Yes, of course. Thank you very much. That's most kind of you. A good day to you. The Lord be with you. And you. 60-40, <laughs> you should need him. Here, put a good reserve on it. I want to make something out of it. Have they gone yet? Oh. <laughs> Good day, Mr. Steptoe. Quite an Indian summer we're having. Well, there's enough of them living around here. <laughs> quiet, quiet. Goodbye. Goodbye. What do they want? On the scrounge you came. Do you realise he, he nearly had a look at these pictures? They're going on the fire now. They're too dangerous to be left lying around. I tell you, there's not going to be any phoenix rising from these ashes. Ah, oh, Mr. Steptoe, welcome to the fete. How can I thank you enough? Oh, no, that, that's all right. What's going on over there, then? I mean, that big queue. What the butler saw. A great success. We haven't stopped taking money on it since we opened. But it's empty. It was. You wouldn't believe how lucky we've been. Our foraging party of Boy Scouts, while searching among the debris of a demolished photographer's shed in the Goldhawk Road... Oh, my God. ...came across, <laughs> under the floorboards, an old what the butler saw, um, 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 thingamajig. What a success. We're selling old pennies at ten pence each, and we've already taken over 50 pounds. Oh, <laughs> But excuse me, Mrs. Excuse me, mate. Can oh, I get through no, it? Well, I want to have a look. Well, do you mind? It's the one in the picture. Yeah, no, excuse me. Hang away from maintainers. I've got oil. Oh, beg your pardon. Excuse me. No, can we get his autograph? Yeah, leave him alone. You come here with me, you. Come on. I'll give us a penny. Here you are. Oh, no, 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 no. 
What is it? It's you again. In your curly-toed slippers. <laughs> and suspenders. A night in a Turkish harem. Oh, that's a good one. It's much more artistic. Your Aunt Rose was very good in that one. I'll murder you. Right, that's it. The show's over. All go home. There's no more to die. Oh, what's your yeah. yeah, go, oh. go and buy some white elephants. I see. I, I see. What are you doing? I put those pictures back in the machine. The show's over. I'm sorry, Mush. Oh, uh, <laughs> sorry, Vicar. Uh, have you seen it? No, no, not yet. You're not going to either. Mammon, Vicar. Mammon. Sodom. The Gomorrah. I'm surprised at you letting your flock look at this stuff. I wouldn't show them to Parisians, let alone parishioners. <laughs> Put them pictures back. Don't be a sport. Good, I'll go then. You put them back. Give us I'll break your arm. Are you going to break the drum? Now, look, you've got them all over the place. Oh, here, I've got one. Give us them photographs back. Come on, it's a one now. No, no, no. One at a time, please. One at a time. Don't push. I'll sign them all. Who to, dear? Mabel. Autographs, shilling each for charity. This is splendid. I didn't know your father was famous, Mr. Stepto. What's what's he done? Here you are. You might as well have a picture. Everybody else has. I say. Good heavens. Autographs, two shillings each. (laughs) Don't forget the bells. Come along now, get the star signature. Oh, God, excuse me. My comfort. Thank you, look, please, I just want to get out. Excuse me. Yeah, is that your dad? No, it's not. Well, who is it then? I don't know. I've never seen him before in my life. It's a complete stranger to me. Goodbye. You've been listening to Wilfred Bramble and Harry H. Corbett as Stepto and Son with Anthony Sharp and Norma Ronald. The programme was written and adapted for radio by Ray Galton and Alan Simpson and produced by Bobby J. Welcome back. I hope you enjoyed a little bit of light relief for a Friday with Steptoe and Son. Don't forget, we're going to be going live with another episode of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar. That's uh, tomorrow night at 5 p.m. Thanks for listening. I'll be with you seven days a week, each and every week, and I'll see you tomorrow on Brett's Old Time Radio Show. Love you. Bye. <laughs>